Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I have some nice personal news to share and also an exciting game to show you. So the personal news is that as of the, this recording, and it certainly can change quite rapidly, on the live uh, worldwide ratings list for War of the Ring, I am currently rated number one. So that has been an achievement I've been working toward for a while, and I uh, think in part because of the this YouTube channel, I've been able to really study and appreciate the help of the community and improve. Also, <laughs> there's a lot of luck in the game, and uh, I think I just happen to be on a lucky streak. I think my rating is certainly inflated right now, uh, but um, I'll just show you so you can see. So this is uh, on November 9th, 2023 at 12.30 p.m., and this is a live rating. So these change whenever any game gets reported, and um, you can see, I think, I mean, this is this is definitely the highest rating I have ever had in my entire life. Um, it might be the highest rating that anybody has had since we've been tracking ratings. The online community tracks ratings for for games, and uh, it's similar to the system that chess uses. Um, and and you can see we keep separate ratings for Shadow and for Free People. Um, I do have the highest Free People rating. I do not have the highest Shadow rating. So you can see that Peter M is extremely good at Shadow and, and has a very strong Shadow rating. Um, and uh, you can just see out of curiosity, games played. So I've played, according to this system, 265 games lifetime, 40 games this year. And of those games, 18 of them this year were Free People. I had a good win rate with free people and then this ridiculous win rate as shadow um which is just crazy i i, I mean yeah sure I, I have some skills to the game but also there's luck so um i do not think that uh i will maintain the top rating spot for that long uh but it was fun uh to have it at the time and i've achieved that so i thought i would share that with you all thank you for the support that everybody's given and um for for the enthusiasm that people have shared uh for this game it's really a pleasure to get to um share this game with you all and for us all to get better uh together so um i'm just gonna load up this is a game that i played most recently i'm in the um 2023 league in tier one and um i'm trying to play all my league games by the deadline um let me just view hands so we can see that and uh, this was my second game against uh, Romsteel, who is also a very strong player and has an awesome YouTube channel. Um, I will post a link to their channel as well in the description. So um, we gave two tokens to free people. Let's jump into the game. Uh, I allocated one eye and rolled no musters, and they got this balanced roll. So, um, you know, I see that I'm starting with Day Without Dawn. And Worn with Sorrow and Toil. Worn with Sorrow and Toil is great for applying some um, corruption pressure indirectly to the Fellowship and also sort of impacting the tempo of when they make moves and how they play out their cards. And seeing Day Without Dawn early is great if you can deny uh, Gandalf. Um, now, that said, I need to have enough musters to get everybody at war to be able to play this. So this is pretty far off. And if I had more musters, I would be inclined to maybe more proactively muster um, the South Rounds and Easterlings to war, but no musters turn one. Obviously, that's uh, a little bit of bad luck. They got two playable cards, but no um, Palantirs, so they'll probably save those. Let's see what happens. So they start by passing. I move um, an army from Baradur to Gorgoroth. I think I'm going to have a pretty standard opening here where I'm going to send uh, this big army in Mordor up to um, the Dew Line and then hope that um, hope that I will be able to get there in time before they muster up too much. But quite honestly, with these two musters and with my complete lack of musters, I'm not feeling particularly hopeful, but I need to I need to do something. And moving that army into position isn't isn't necessarily a bad thing. All right, so they move and I hit them. So that at least is a good start and then get a three right away. So clearly they're going to lose Gandalf, but this is a situation where there's a little bit of silver lining for having not rolled too many musters because now I can wait to get Saruman turn two or the Witch King, I guess, if they get the elves to war uh, until the last action of the turn. 
in which case they will not be able to bring Gandalf into play. Or maybe they just won't roll a Will of the West and it won't matter. That said, they do have tokens and the tokens can give them tempo. And so they might uh, they might be they might use a token and then I won't be able to get Saruman or it'll be a trade of Saruman for Gandalf and I won't I wouldn't make that trade. So I may be at seven dice for next turn also, depending on if they roll a Will of the West. All right, so um, they put Strider as guide, and um, I play Warren with Sauron Toil now because from now on, as they're going to move and take casualties, uh, they will have to lose character guards, and I'm, I'd be happy to get rid of Elven Cloaks. That would be just fine with me. Or they have to spend an action early on to play it when otherwise they might not prioritize that. All right, they move a second time. Clearly, it's worth it, and, um, and then I hit them again. And I only get a one. So nothing too exciting there. If they had been revealed, uh, anything worse. But I'm very happy to get two hits. And, you know, I see many people allocating zero eyes as shadow turn one. And that is a totally valid approach to the game. Um, And then sometimes when that happens, you get um, no hits or even no eyes on turn one. And, and yet when you allocate one eye and possibly roll one more or two more, you get starts like this where the fellowship just gets hit twice right off the bat. And, and that, I mean, obviously that's not, it wasn't hugely likely to hit them twice, but if you allocate some eyes and you plan for it, then that, that can happen. So, um, it's definitely a slower game. Um, I'm not certainly not making very fast military progress given no musters, but at least I got four, four, uh, attacks. I can move armies around two armies. It's not, not too bad. All right. So they just take the corruption. Clearly that's right. You don't want to lose a random companion to a one, uh, and then also lose Elven Cloaks to Warmest Arm Toil. So totally right. All right. I move my army to, um, from Gorgoroth to Morinon, and I'm mostly just hoping that they don't muster the elves because they could get the elves to war this turn, right? They could use uh, t- two musters and their um, um, action token to get the elves to war. And now how am I possibly going to have any easy strongholds? So I'm actually happier to see this this movement um, into Old Forest Road and Westham Net and you know, hopefully they don't have scouts. Hopefully I'll draw a swarm of bats, but I'm, I'm okay with this. Uh, I move my armies. I'm playing a little cautiously. I leave a regular in Dol Golder because I do intend to bring this army from Daggerlad up to um, the north. And then I'm going to have an attack. And because I'm short, I'm relatively short on musters, I don't necessarily want to have to spend uh, a muster die at a potentially key moment into um, Dol Guldur, and I don't have Swarm of Bats. So if they muster the north, uh, it's quite possible that this unit in Old Forest Road could then threaten Dol Guldur. So I'm just playing it a little cautiously, and hopefully I'll either be able to get some card that brings more units to Moria, either Shadows on the Misty Mountain or Pits of Mordor, or um, I don't know. There are probably other cards too. So... Um, all right, so I must, they muster the elves once, which I think is certainly correct. And then I move towards the elven strongholds. And then they use their token here to get the elves one more toward war. And that's okay. Um, I might have been tempted to save it to next turn, potentially, because um, I'm as free people, I am going to want to deny shadow Saruman, uh, or at least if I roll the Will of the West, make them trade. If they get Saruman, then I get Gandalf, and I would save my Will of the West for the last action, and I use my token, so I get the last action. But I also see the intention of trying to get the elves to war sooner so that as these armies come marching in, uh, you'll be able to muster the elves. But I might, I probably would have waited to see what I rolled, because if I only get one muster, if I only roll one muster next round, then um, getting mustering the elves once towards war is not actually... Uh, potentially helpful. So uh, I probably would have waited. Okay, not a big deal though. They draw Ents and Kindred of Glorfindel, not particularly useful. I get um, Deadly Strife, Return to Valinor. I mean, who's going to play Return to Valinor? But Deadly Strife is incredible. And um, Nazgul Search is fine once the Fellowship gets removed, uh, gets uh, out of this stronghold. So hopefully at some point I'll hit them. I allocate another eye. Um, I roll one more and only one muster and three Palantirs. So... um, this is a extremely painful role for me because I'm not getting, uh, they did get a Will of the West. So like there's no chance that I'm getting Saruman, this Will of the West, they don't even need to temporize. So that whole thing about temporizing with the um, 
our army uh, muster token didn't didn't matter last round because I can't even get a companion this. I can't even get a minion this turn. So um, rolling only one muster on twelve dice is low probability. I don't remember exactly how low, but low. Um, and the fact that I have these three Palantirs with no playable cards, like Nazgul Search, maybe I can play it if they happen to get revealed, uh, but it's just not, it's not great. So, um, all right, so they pass, and then I just start drawing strategy cards. I draw Rage of the Dunlendings. Now, this is useful. This is playable if I get Isengard to war. So I can use this muster to get Isengard to war, then I can play Rage of the Dunlendings, and then I can have six units in Moria. So that's my plan now. I, you know, it's it's not like I would rather probably save Rage of the Dunlendings to go attack the Shire near the end of the game and get my final victory points. But um, given how awkward this role is, I'm I'm okay with that. That's, that's certainly not a bad card to get. Um, they play Elven Cloaks now, which is certainly correct because they're probably going to move and they don't want to risk losing it. Maybe they'll end up losing the Ent, but okay. Um, they don't want to lose it to Warren with Sauron Toil. All right. I draw another strategy card because I just want to see what I'm going to get. I have another Palantir that I know I'm going to end up playing some card with, so I might as well draw another one. And given how slow my military is going, I am going to hope to get Corsairs of Umbar at some point and uh, then potentially take out Dol Amroth before it has a chance to muster up. So um, given that I'm going slowly with the elves, if I draw Corsairs of Umbar early, I may get, I may prioritize getting the Southrons and Easterlings to war, and then I can play Corsairs. Um, and on top of that, I still have Day Without Dawn. So at the moment, like Gandalf wasn't coming in anyway because I'm not getting a, a minion, but if I happen to get a bunch of musters, I could get, I could muster everybody to war, then play Day Without Dawn, and then um, bring in my minions. Um, so that could be good. All right, let's see. So they move. I hit them again. So this is a third hit in a row. Obviously unlikely. I have had two eyes in there, and I get an eye. So this is this is really my best possible result. Uh, to reveal them on step three, they're either going to have to go into Moria, and now an eye is gone from the pool, or they're going to have to go around and take an extra movement. So that's really, that was a quite a lucky and uh, good result for me, though I, my military has been going slowly. So it's it's interesting how sometimes the luck balances out. Like I got unlucky with the um, with the muster rolls, but I've gotten lucky with the hunt rolls. Like you have to get sort of doubly unlucky to have bad hunt results and have bad military results. Um, and I like that. Yeah, sometimes you're going to get games like that, but but often the luck can, can balance out and then you can adjust your strategy. So um, they just take one more corruption. Of course, that makes sense. They want to keep Strider. Um, I get Isengard to war. They hide the Fellowship. I play Rage of the Dunlendings into Moria. And um, then they move the Fellowship again. I hit them again. Now, that was decent chances. That was close to 50% because I was hitting on fives. And I get a three. Um, and at this point, I think they take a random. So they take a random and they get Strider. Uh, and obviously that is a bad start. <laughs> like that is, that is not good. They have gotten hit four times in a row and on their first random companion loss, they have lost Strider. So that is really bad luck. Now, I think it's the right choice to take Strider. I don't think you want to go up to five corruption. So strategically, I think free people has been playing very well. And sometimes, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get bad luck. So that is bad luck, just plain and simple. Sometimes that happens. Um, all right. I remember Warren with Sorrow and Toil, and they lose the end. Um, uh, and now I have a fairly efficient army movement where I get into Dimmeldale and I get um, this army to Southern Ravanian. So, um, you know, now this is looking more respectable. Um, elves still aren't at war. It would have been interesting if they had... Um, maybe gone a little slower. You know, they did have a Will of the West and a um, Muster. And they could have, they could have instead of, I mean, I think it makes sense to, to what they did, hide and move. Um, but I don't know now if they only roll one Muster next round. They're not, and I, I'm probably going to be able to make it into the Elven Strongholds next round, or at least there's some chance of it. Um you know, they're going to end up not being able to muster up as much. So I don't know. All right. They got Celeborns. That's good luck. And Mithracote and Sting. That's good luck. 
Um, and and yet, actually, Mithra Coat and Sting is a little tricky because of Warren with Sorrow and Toil. So, um, all right, so I allocate an eye, and now I get three musters, and they get their Will of the West. So, so this is an interesting situation where I still don't have any minion. It's quite rare for me to have no minions on turn three, but I don't have one. And so they can't bring in Gandalf uh, until I bring somebody in. So on one hand, I could muster uh, with this, I could muster once to get Sauron to war, and then I can use these two other musters to bring the elves to war, or to bring in the Witch King and to bring in Saruman. But right now, and if I were trading two minions for Gandalf, I probably would do that. But but given that I have Day Without Dawn, I'm, I, I think probably my plan is to wait yet another round to bring in a um, to bring in a minion until turn four so that I can play next round day without dawn if they roll the will of the west and then um, and then bring in my minion. So I think that's my plan. All right, they start by moving that makes sense and I miss them. Uh, I get Sauron to war and this way if they get the elves to war, I will be able to immediately attack into Lorien. There was a version of this turn where instead of moving right away, they mustered the elves to war, and then I ha would have to get the I would have to get Sauron to war, and then they could muster an elite into Lorien, and they give up on Gandalf, and they give me the Witch King and Saruman, but then I'm. Um, but then this army here is sitting is sitting in southern Rovanian, and then next round they're going to be able to attack and get into, um, or they'll be able to have, they'll have like one, two, three turns before I get into Woodland Realm. They can possibly muster up Woodland Realm. So I don't know if it's worth it. They're holding Celeborn, so I can see why they're not bringing the elves to war. Um, but if you have four elites in Lorien, I don't know. You hold Lorien pretty well. All right, so I just continue moving along. I get my army from Far Harad to Near Harad in the hopes that someday I'll draw Corsairs. I again got these extra Palantirs that are not particularly useful yet. And they play Celeborns here. All right. And they redraw into Riders of Theoden. I go ahead and play Nazgul's Search because I don't know what else am I going to play. It does slow them down a little bit. Um, I just reveal them. So I guess that's my thinking. I only have one eye in the hunt pool. So... If they spend this Will of the West to hide, then that's slowing them down from what is otherwise a relatively safe movement of getting hit only one third uh, of the time on a single die. So um, if I had extra Nazgul, maybe I could have put a Nazgul and Karak as well, but I just don't have very many Nazgul uh, and I want to keep them in my armies. So hopefully I can get an army unit into Karak at some point. All right. Uh, they pass. I think for a second, I attack into Old Forest Road. I'm hoping that they don't have scouts. Uh, they don't have scouts. They play Power of Tom Bombadil. And um, I get my hit anyway. They get a hit back. And now I have a useful place for where to put my uh, my uh, Goblin Man, my Half-Orc and Goblin Man. And, um, and now they use their token. So this is this makes total sense. They are going to force me to take the... Uh, they're going to get to take the last action of the round. And therefore, if I bring in Saruman, then they're going to get Gandalf. So this is exactly the sort of situation I was talking about. This is one of the indirect benefits of tokens. Yes, they also get to draw a card. That's nice. But mostly it's the tokens. Wow. And they got Thranduil. So they got both... I forgot. They got both um, musters for the two elven strongholds. And, and they're also going to be able to... Um, muster with with these tokens so i think about doing this first um and then i end up just mustering the southrons and easterlings to war i'm not sure why i did that i guess i was i was like threatening that i had um the ring wraiths are abroad so that if they muster once then the elves then i could get uh, i could attack one of them but i don't know how useful that is um so they end up getting the elves to war here and uh, and I play half orcs and goblin men. And now the elves are just going crazy mustering. They muster in Woodland Realm. And uh, this is out of control. So, you know, this happens sometimes when you have a slow military start. I'm going to, I have some benefit on the, um, on the corruption side. So, 
All right, I draw Isildur's Bane, not playable while they're in Carrick, even if I control it. So I have to get them out of Carrick to be able to play Isildur's Bane, which, by the way, is incredibly useful right now because I have five tiles that would reveal them, and they don't have Strider anymore. So Isildur's could be very effective. Um, I have to allocate one eye. They're continuing to move. And then I get um, four eyes. <laughs> So, you know, they're revealed. They're just like, this is just a super slow military game. They get another Will of the West, uh, but they, again, cannot bring in Gandalf. But um, what's going to happen is these Elven Strongholds are just going to go crazy, get really super buffed. So they muster another elite into Woodland Realm. I attack Lorien because they have already played uh, Celeborn's... Galadriel. So I know that if I besiege Lorien, it cannot get bigger than this. And I have hill trolls. So at least this is something that can take out Lorien with hill trolls. And then this army up here, I mean, I have to pick either attacking Lorien or attacking Woodland Realm. And I know that Thrandall's Archers is still in the deck somewhere, even they happen to be holding it. Uh, so I've decided I'm going to at least try and take out Lorien, hope they don't get power too great at some point and if they do i'll have to get rid of it and then maybe this army gets redirected into erebor at some point that's that's my thinking so they go into siege in lorien and then they muster again in um woodland realm so woodland realm is just this unbelievably buff location now i might have been tempted to not do that because there are now only two elven regulars left and so I could potentially go after uh, Rivendell at some point, and they would not have a lot of support to defend it. Now, I guess for six hit points with two, two Elven regulars, still still something. So, all right, I play Hill Trolls because what else am I going to play? Um, I can't play Isildur's Bane, and I'm going to save it until they're hidden anyway. So might as well play Hill Trolls. Um, and then they, uh, what do they do? They muster the north towards war, which is nice play because now if I move using this army movement into uh, Carrick, which I would have been happy to do, um, then Dale can start mustering up right away. And now I'm in kind of a precarious situation because if I do not take out Dale right now, then they can use this will of the west to muster Dale, uh, the north to war, and then at the start of next round, start mustering in Dale. So... Um, my thinking is I'm okay with that because it will slow down the fellowship. This is otherwise a die that could be used to hide and make progress on the fellowship. Yes, they lost Strider and that's bad, but my military is going so, so slowly that um, they they do have time. They do have some time. So I, I don't know what I would do as free people. Um, I pro Yeah, I don't know. So I get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war because I have Day Without Dawn. So my plan is I'm going to wait until turn five to bring in Saruman and the Witch King. And if Free People happens to roll Will of the West, then I will um, get rid of it first with Day Without Dawn. Then I'll bring in my minions. So yes, I'm waiting until turn five. That's quite, quite slow. Uh, but right. Oh, and oh, right. Another thing. This round, I didn't even acknowledge this. This round could have been the round that I brought in Saruman, but because I rolled so many eyes, free people by default got the last action of the round. I only had three actions this round. If I had had four actions this round, I could have brought in Saruman uh, this round. But in this case, I'm not going to do it. I'm making the same trade again. I'm not bringing in Saruman because it would give them Gandalf the white. And that's you know, obviously bad for me, but also bad for them. And in general, it, it, I think it favors me, particularly because next round I, I can see that I'll be able to do the day without Don play. Um, all right. So that's that. They do muster the North to war. They do not hide with the fellowship. So the fellowship made no progress. And now um, I draw into Corsairs. So obviously that's excellent. I have Black Captain Commands, which is great. Um, so these are all excellent, excellent cards and I, they did not move at all. And so I can allocate zero eyes this round. And I'm going to do that because the chances of them being able to move a bunch 
are relatively low, particularly because I know they're going to want to save a Will of the West to get Gandalf, and I know that I'm going to be able to get rid of it with Day Without Dawn. So, um, so I allocate zero eyes. I roll none, but this is a relatively safe time to do it, and they do get three movement. So three movement is good. That's that's nice. But again, th these Will of the West are not going to do them any favors. Um, so they start by hiding the Fellowship with a Will of the West. They did not muster in Dale. And now I do something dumb. I cannot explain it. I do not know why. I move into Carrick. So this is just, uh, I'm pretty sure this is wrong, like just outright wrong. It lets them muster into Dale. Uh, so I should have, um, I should have just attacked Dale. I know that they're not going to use this Will of the West. They're going to save this Will of the West to force me to um, choose between Saruman and the Witch King. Uh, versus Gandalf. So I know they're not spending this Will of the West. I'm going to be able to trigger Day Without Dawn. Um, so outright mistake. Don't know what I was thinking. And now they muster into Dale. <laughs> right, of course. So, um, you know, sometimes you make mistakes. That's the game. That's part of the game. Um, and also even getting this unit onto Carrick doesn't help at all because I'm rolling zero dice. I have a reroll of zero dice. Uh, so... That doesn't even help. It, it does prevent the North from mustering in Carrick, and I do eventually want to get them out of Carrick so that they can, so that I can play Isildur's Bane. So it's not horrible, but just the ordering was wrong. I could have attacked into Dale and then attacked in, uh, in attacked into Carrick, and that would have been fine. I have enough attack actions this round that it's it's no problem. All right, so um, I play Day Without Dawn here, leaving them with just a single. Uh, character die. Uh, they start passing. I get Saruman. I get the Witch King. Um, and then I attack Dale because I don't want them to be making any more mustering next round. They play scouts. And um, Erebor is now one elite stronger than it should be. Not the end of the world for me, but certainly not great. My whole plan was to take out Erebor with this army. That's not happening. But I do have the South Rounds and Easterlings at war, so I can potentially go and attack um, into Erebor. The Fellowship is pretty slow, right? They have not even moved once this round. Uh, they had to hide, and now they're going to move once. And Gandalf is denied, and it's now the first time they have a chance to get Gandalf is turn six. I'm going to start rolling nine dice to their four. That always feels good. Yes, it's slow. Turn five for Saruman and the Witch King is extremely slow in the base game. Very rare that it happens, but sometimes it does, and you have to play You have to play what you get. So um, I go ahead and um, play Corsairs of Umbar now because maybe they have Imrahil of Dol Amroth. Maybe they have um, Corsairs. Cors uh, Kierden's ships, but by doing it now, it requires, it's going to force them to, um, it's going to force them to use a ring and move zero times on a turn when I had zero eyes. So um, that's why I'm playing it now. I did make a slight mistake because I used an army attack into Dale instead of using this... Um, Right, I did use, I used an army die to attack into Dale. Yeah, I used, I used an army die. Uh, so that was a mistake, another mistake this round, because now I'm going to have to play Black Captain Commands into, um, into Dol Amroth when I don't really want my armies down here. And I'm going to be able to take out Dol Amroth. I guess I was slightly worried about them using a ring um, to reinforce Dol Amroth, but they didn't even have anything to, to reinforce with. So, um, maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe this is okay. Because if they had reinforced it with a ring, then I really would want, um, the Witch King to come down there. But then again, yeah, that's wrong. Because if they, if they did reinforce it, then there would be no rush to, to take out Dol Amroth. Um, so yeah, so that was a mistake. Should have used the character die to attack into Dale. And then I would have used an army attack into Dol Amroth and then for, for Corsairs of Umbar. And then I could have just attacked with no leadership using Deadly Strife and um, with three elites against these three regular or two elites plus Deadly Strife. I could have taken out these for sure. So and then I would have saved Black Captain Commands for a better use up here, turning a Palantir into an attack. So uh, misplay there. 
Um, they move, and I attack. I have to play Black Captain because I want to take out Dol Amroth now in case they draw Kyrdan ships um, or Imrahil of Dol Amroth. Or they just figured I wasn't going to be able to attack again. All right, so they play Daylight here. I, I don't know. I guess they, they had an extra card. Um... Yeah, I might have been tempted to save the daylight uh, against some bigger attacks uh, because I don't think there's any way that um, that this is living. Like, there's just no way that these guys are surviving. So, yeah, I think that's I think that's a mistake. Yeah, you don't want to discard cards. I'm with you, but. Okay. Um, in any case, I win that battle immediately. Uh, they draw there and back again and Grimbjorn and I get Grand and Shadows on the Misty Mountains. Fine. Um, I am now at th three victory points. They declare out of Carrick, which was my goal. That's why I didn't leave anybody in Old Forest Road. I did want them to get out of Carrick, so now I can play as Luder's Bane. All right. Um... I allocate one eye and get all of these musters, and then they get no Gandalf. So this was the first turn that they really actually had a chance to get Gandalf, and they miss. In general, Gandalf is two turns away because you have about a 50% chance of rolling a Will of the West. So at any given moment before you roll the Will of the West, Gandalf is two turns away. Um, all right, so they start by moving. I think that makes sense. And I hit them, and they get a two. They lose Legolas and um, and I forget and I and then they start talking and um, you know I it's just uh, and then I and then I respond there's hope and now I've forgotten Warren with sorrow and toil so I I'm assuming they did not do that on purpose to try and distract me um, but I did forget Warren with sorrow and toil so that's a little it's a little sad. Um, the fact that there was Mithril Coat and Sting here is huge. You know, getting rid of Mithril Coat and Sting is quite significant. And, um, yeah, you know, I will go alone there and back again. These are not probably particularly significant cards. Um, but, okay, so, uh, we talk about things and they're, they're feeling frustrated because they're getting hit on the hunt and, and I get that, but, um, Shadow Military is very slow. Um, they definitely need Gandalf. They want Gandalf. And so getting Gandalf sooner rather than later is better. But um, this is not this is not like a runaway Shadow Victory. And they're still at negative four corruption even now. So, you know, I didn't have any musters the first two turns of the game. I got one muster the first two turns of the game. I didn't get companion, you know, minions until turn five. Uh, so things are going slow militarily. All right. I move Nazgul around and I think about where to go. I end up focusing on, um, Rohan because I have the fighting Urukai and, um, I had a lot of options here. So this is actually a very interesting turn. What what would you do with this? One option I had was orcs multiplying again, shadows on the misty mountain, and then, uh, basically go after Rivendell. I have a bunch of musters and they only rolled one muster, but I saw that they did not have any army movement. Um, so it's going to be tricky for these units to get into Helm's Deep and therefore I'm taking the opportunity to go after Helm's Deep now and they don't have Gandalf yet. So I'm not super afraid of Ents. I mean, I don't want to lose Saruman to Ents, but... Um, I wouldn't mind going after Rohan. Also, also, they only have Rohan and the dwarves not yet at war. So I could get Rohan to war and then bring these Southron and Easterling units, maybe mustering over here, potentially at some point, and then come in and take out Erebor, or at least besiege Erebor. And now I get the Mouth of Sauron early because the Fellowship is not making particularly fast progress. They sort of made choices a couple times to muster up, which is great. They have strong defense. Um, but it gives me a chance to um, potentially get the mouth early. So, um, all right, we have to pause after this. I, I only have, because I have um, an elite here in Dale, because I played half orcs and goblin men, I, um, I end up having sort of extra, 
Uh, I can I only have three uh, four uh, elites in the force pool, so I'm planning on mustering once, and then I will do um, two more uh, musters using the voice of Saruman, and then I will attack with this eleven hit point army. That's my plan. All right, so I muster. Uh, I now have an eleven hit point army in Orthanc, and um, oh, and by the way, I placed my um, my Nazgul like this, leaving Northern Rovanian out because they're already at one movement and I'm assuming that they're going to move again. And if by leaving Northern Rovanian open, I encourage them, I incentivize them to not move a second time this round, that's great. Like that is, that is totally fine with me. I am happy to give them no reroll for their first move next round in exchange for basically, I don't know, effectively a cruel weather for free uh, by them not moving when they could. So clearly they're going to move again. And if they don't, I'm totally happy with that. And that's why I leave Northern Rovanian open. All right. Um, They uh, use a ring here to get um, Fords of Eisen and Westamnet holed up in Helm's Deep. And that's really interesting to me because they have scouts I guess they were assuming that I had Swarm of Bats, which would allow me to take out these units in Fords of Eisen. So I think that is a really um, deep play on their part, and I think it makes a lot of sense um, because the odds of me having at least one Swarm of Bats by this point in the deck is reasonably high. There are two in the deck, and I've drawn nine strategy cards, and they saw that I put the Witch King here, which implies I have cards to play. Um so I, I like that play a lot. That's very clever. Um, so they have now really successfully defended Helm's Deep. I am not super happy about that, but at least I got a ring out of it, and um, so be it. It frees up Rohan. I move everybody because I'm just hoping that Gandalf the White does not show up next round. There's only a 50% chance that Gandalf the White's going to show up, and they might not have an end card. I did discard a card with Warren with Sorrow and Toil. I'm probably going to discard another one at some point. Um, it did happen that I got rid of it before. So um, so that's why I'm playing a little um, riskier with Orthanc. And there's no way that I could take out Helm's Deep anyway unless I bring all of these units. So yes, I don't want to lose um, Saruman, but sometimes you have to just hope that they don't, that they don't have ends. All right, so I move armies. This is the slight benefit to me of the fact that they retreated out of Fords of Eisen entirely because now I get to get this um, these armies into position faster. So, okay. Um, they do move the Fellowship, absolutely correct. Um, and, I'm, and I miss them. So the chances of me hitting there are extremely high. Um, what is that? The chances of missing, I had to roll a two-thirds chance of missing eight out of... 27 chances of missing. So I guess, yeah, not that. Yeah. What is that? That's like 30%. Um, okay. So not so crazy that I miss, but certainly better odds than not that I would hit them there. Uh, and now I attack into Helm's Deep thinking that I'm going to play, um, I guess I think that I'm going to play Fighting Uruk High. The other issue, oh, right, this is the other thing. I don't have any elites in the force pool. So even if, like, at the start of next round, Gandalf shows up, I could theoretically react by mustering an elite into Orthanc, but I don't have any elites to muster. So at some point, I really have to get rid of these these elites. So my thinking, I think at the moment, was I'm going to attack into Rohan um, and then maybe play Fighting Urukai. They play I Will Go Alone, um, sending Bormir out. I'm not sure exactly why. Um, I don't know what else. I would have been really tempted to send Gimli into Erebor. Like, what is, what is Boromir into Druid and Forest do? You're going to have to spend another action later to move Boromir into Minas Tirith. And I think you're going to be really low on dice. So, yeah, I think I would have... If I'm going to play, I will go alone. I, I don't even know that I'm going to play. I will go alone. Um, I think I would put I would put Gimli in Erebor probably. So that way I can like the dwarves may be going to war, and it, and either way I have a companion in there as a good place to defend. I still have Thranduil's archers to potentially reinforce 
Woodland Realm a little bit. I'm down to free people is down to only uh, regular units, but still that can you know that can help. Um, particularly when you have so many elites in the battle, uh, Shadow is less likely to press and press and press. They're likely to just attack slowly over time with the Witch King cycling cards, and that gives you time to reinforce with something like Thranduil's Archers. Um, you know, because you have you have Brave Stand also. The other thing I would be tempted to do is play Riders of Theoden. I mean, it lets you start to muster in in Edoras, and then these guys can start to threaten some military things. I mean, who knows? Uh, it's not it's not likely. The daylight effect is very good. All right, um, all right. So I decide to play Isildur's Bane here because I don't have any combat cards that I particularly want to play. And there's a chance that this battle is going to go south. Um, so I think I want to see what I have. Maybe I draw some reinforcement cards. Maybe I just draw better combat cards. So I am a little worried about something like Gwahir and Riders of Theoden. Um, and it looks like my opponent is playing to potentially draw Gwahir or potentially draw We Prove the Swifter. So I do, I like that is really sweet with Riders of Theoden with a companion in there. Um, so I can see that. I can Maybe they're just hoping to draw that. The odds of that are only one in nine, pretty low odds, but could really swing the battle if you manage it. So, all right. In any case, I play Isildur's Bane. I'm happy for them to be revealed at the start of next round if I can draw it. I have five out of, what is that, 12? Uh, 11? Five out of 11 chance, a slightly worse than 50% chance of revealing them. Um, and I do draw a reveal. So this was a situation where I knew Isildur's Bane was going to be good. I um, left a regular in Carrick and not anything in Old Forest Road to encourage them to declare out so that in this moment I could play it. So I, I do, um, I was planning for that and that works out well. And now I'm going to get two more cards at the start of next round and I can hopefully play some useful combat cards in the Battle of Helm's Deep and hope that they don't immediately bring uh, Boromir into Helm's Deep. All right, they get Path of the Woes and Bilbo's Song. Uh, they get rid of Path of the Woeses, sure. I am going to be putting the North to war. I mean, uh, Rohan to war. So, you know, you could then reinforce Minas Tirith that way if you're worried about it. But, all right. Um, I allocate one eye and roll no more. And then they get three movement. So this is possibly they're getting into Mordor this round. Um, but I drew uh, Nazgul Strike. And there are quite a few cards that reveal them. There are quite a few tiles that reveal them. So I think it's relatively unlikely at this point. They're going to have to hide, move, move, move to get into Mordor this round. I'll, I should be able to, um, I should be able to reveal them at some point in the first three moves, because effectively um, they're going to move once. If they stay hidden, they're going to move again. If they stay hidden at that point, I will then play Nazgul Strike, and I will have a very good chance of hitting them. Seventy-five percent chance of of hitting them, even with only a single die in the hunt pool and then um and then hopefully revealing them so i think the chances of them making it to mortar are relatively so given that i have a uh, relatively low given that i have nazgul strike i'm also going to um cycle so they hide and then i play ulug high because i want to be prepared um for this battle to go south uh, i don't want to lose the witch king and um i definitely want to play uh play these cards. I'm pr I think I'm going to use Grand to cycle into another character card. Um, they move and I hit them. Relatively low chances. I did have two dice to roll a six, but relatively low chances and they get revealed. The The hunt pool was not favorable for uh, staying hidden. Chances, if you're going to get hit, chances are you're going to get revealed, but obviously getting revealed on the very first action is not great. Um, they now um, are revealed. I know for sure they're not making it into Mordor this round. And I would really like to, if possible, bring the um, bring the dwarves to war this round because I can then get the Mouth of Sauron this round on turn seven, which would be great. So um, I don't know if I end up doing that. Would you end up doing that? Um Let's see how the turn plays out. So I go ahead and 
um, draw a strategy card here because I want to see... Oh, also, by the way, this was the second turn that they had a chance to get Gandalf the White. They did not get it on the second turn. So usually we'd expect it about two turns away when they first had a chance. So this is around when we would expect Gandalf to show up. Um, certainly unlucky that they have not gotten Gandalf yet, uh, having had two turns to get him. Um, that's like a 25% chance, right? That they would, they're in the 25% unlucky zone. Um, 75% chance that you'd have him within two turns of the first chance that you could get him. Um, so I drew a strategy card because I wanted to potentially have more effective strategy cards to play now that I know I don't need to cycle um, character cards too hard. Um, seeing new powers rising is nice. It's a good defense against Gandalf, the white showing up next round if I need to. And then maybe these units can come and take the Shire or can come and take Rivendell. Um, We'll see. I have options. So I play Fighting Urukai, and I'm basically saying to myself, you know what? I don't have enough dice to take out um, to get Erebor. I have enough time. I'm going to use these musters to muster up in North Rune and then merge and get a big army in East Rune, and then I'm going to... Um, and then I'm going to bring that army in to Erebor. So the mouth, I think, is coming next round, not this round. All right, so I play Grand anyway because I just don't have many other useful cards to play. I don't want to use Onslaught here. I, I'll save it for the end. And while I like saving Grand as an attack, I also... Um, don't want to take... I am a little scared, right? This is six hit points against 13 hit points, and they could have Ents. They might be tempted to play Ent cards. Um, and I don't mind cycling more character cards to, you know, be able to mess with the Fellowship. Because as long as the Fellowship is weak, then that can be good. All right, so, so um, I get one hit, and they get one back. And then I redraw into Breaking of the Fellowship. And they are revealed right now. So that could be, that is playable unless they hide. Um, round two, I um, I think I just don't play cards. Because I'm like, I have 12 hit points against five. I'm probably okay. Let's see what happens. I can save Dread and Despair for round three, if it turns out they're doing, like they get some crazy attack and do a bunch of damage to me and I don't do any to them, I'll save Dread and Despair for then, see how the combat goes. Because I know it's going to go at least another round. So I don't play a card here. They don't play a card, which is encouraging for me. Um, I guess they don't have very many useful cards. They're saving, they're saving the Daylight because they just don't think that these guys can hold out. Or they're saving it for me, like maybe round three, I'm going to play a combat card and then they'll play the Daylight then. Okay. I also might have been tempted. Oh, they don't have an Elite anymore, so they can't play They can't play Valor. All right. Um, I get two hits, a little above average, not crazy. They get no hits. That's quite a bit below average. Um, and now they're down to three. And now I'm like, I'm definitely not playing cards because uh, these guys can just win the battle. I don't get any hits on round three, which is below average. They get one. So, you know, it's, yeah. All right. I press normally. I get two hits. They get uh, two hits back. Um, I press normally. They play Riders of Theoden here. I'm really surprised by that. Um, I mean, now I have seven hit points against one. I definitely would have saved Riders of Theoden for any of the other combats that are coming up. And I think they, they acknowledge that was a mistake. So, okay, uh, mistakes happen. All right, so um, I win that battle. Now Rohan is at war. If these were army movements, I would be tempted to get, um, get the dwarves to war. And maybe I could if I attack, like, if I attack into... Iron Hills, and then I attack into Erebor, then um, I could do that, and then I could get the mouth. I don't think I really considered that. Um, yeah. So they muster into Westamnet and Edoras, and I think, I guess my thinking is I'm pretty sure I want to take out... Um, Uh, 
I want to take out Rohan while I have the chance. I play Breaking of the Fellowship because there are only th three eyes in there, and I won't mind getting rid of any any tile. Is okay with me. Um, it's a little. It's a. I wonder if this is correct because what am I hoping for? I I don't know exactly what I'm hoping for. Um, I could, if I wanted to, attack into Westamnet and cycle this card. Um, and maybe, maybe that would be better. Um, I play it, I guess, thinking I'm just going to do corruption damage. And I draw a three, which is obviously the maximum amount of corruption damage. But... Uh, like, yeah, that's good corruption for sure. I just did four corruption, but, um, worn with sorrow and toil is now useless because, um, I just basically saved them a character card because Gimli is not being taken as casualty. And I have now turned these into not reveals because now Gollum is guide. So like, what was I, what was I really hoping for? Was I hoping to like pull a zero reveal out of the pool? Does that, I, it's weird that like presumably drawing a three for breaking of the fellowship is the best possible result, which I got. And yet did this actually help me win the game? Uh, having Gollum as guide this early will allow free people to save corruption by revealing and they can... There, I think I just like significantly increased their chances of making it into Mordor next round where there was a decent chance they weren't going to make it into Mordor getting revealed, particularly because I also had Nazgul strike. So very weird. Comment if you would have played Breaking of the Fellowship and if you would have what you were hoping to draw. Um, okay, so that happened. I, maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. Pro probably good for corruption. Seems good. Um... I attack into Westamnet now. I don't have any card to cycle. I get this insane roll. <laughs> Five hits that does not matter at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's funny. That happens sometimes. They don't get any hit back. I leave one regular. I'm surprised a little bit that they didn't play scouts there. Like they could have played scouts into Fords of Eisen. And then um, if I and now like I have to deal with Fords of Eisen. At which point I might not hit them on a six and um, then they can muster into Edoras and Edoras can be a pain. So yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised. Why, why didn't they play scouts there? What are they saving the scouts for? Like normally I'd save scouts for, for Iron Hills, but you already, but Erebor is already full. So I think I would have played scouts there to Fords of Eisen, threatened to walk into um, Orthanc. Because I'm not going so fast on military that like these guys in Woodland Realm could potentially come out to Dol Golder at some point, make an attack, depending on what I roll. All right. So I muster into North Rune. I assume they just don't have scouts. Um, and then so I muster twice into North Rune and then they um, hide the fellowship. And then I use my ring here because... Um, uh, I attack into Edoras because I don't want them mustering in Edoras. And um, this army is a little weak. So maybe it's wrong of me to be attacking into Edoras with the ring. But yeah, I do it. So I do not get a hit, but at least now they are um, not able to muster into Edoras. If they muster into Fold, then I'm pretty sure this army in Edoras can take them out. Um, it's a little tricky, though, because they they have scouts. Um, they, would, they wouldn't be able to retreat into Westamnet. That's the thing. So maybe this guy in Fold can attack, it can like just move into Westamnet, but then I can attack a single regular from, from Edoras into Westamnet. All right. Um, next round. So... They draw um, not particularly useful cards, Fear Fire Foes. That will let them get Boromir into Minas Tirith, I guess. Um, and I roll only one character, no Palantirs, and they get no mustering. 
And again, no Gandalf the White. So now we're in the like 12 and a half percent chance bad luck zone of having three turns of not getting Gandalf the White when you could. Um, but they did get two characters. So maybe they will be able to get um, into Mordor. So they move right away and um, I miss them. And I only have one character die. And what I want is to play Nazgul Strike and, um, right, I've been holding Nazgul Strike uh, and reposition my Nazgul. Um, this was a, I think, mistake that I attacked into Fold. What I should have done right now is play Nazgul Strike immediately. And then this this um, army in, in Edoras is enough to take out Fold uh, without the Witch King there. No problem. And they don't have any musters. If they want to use a ring to muster uh, um, an elite into Fold, that's fine with me. So uh, I make a mistake here by attacking Fold. Uh, I absolutely should have played Nazgul Strike right here. I, again, completely overkill Fold. Um, and at least uh, um, Rohan is now under control. But they get to move a second time. I hit them. And now Gollum gets to use his ability. So this is the advantage that I gave uh, free people. They um, only take one corruption. They reveal into Morinon, uh and they get an eye. So that's fine. The expected damage was relatively low, you know, probably less than one at that point. Um, and now I can't play Nazgul Strike. I can't play um, Cruel Weather if I had it, any of these things. So... So that was that was definitely a misplay on my part. I could have easily foreseen they were going to move a second time. Absolutely should have played Nazgul Strike when I had the chance. Now what happens instead is I move um, totally the hard way, right, into uh, I use this, this uh, character die to reposition Nazgul. All right, so um, I attack in East Rune to Iron Hills. At this point, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter for me to bring the, the Witch King in. Um, and I'm saving this uh, character die. I don't know what else I'm going to do with it. I guess I'm just going to reposition Nazgul. All right, so I get Erebor um, under siege. The dwarves are now at war. Uh, they play Bilbo's song, great efficient healing at this point. Um, and I bring in the mouth. So this is one turn early for the mouth, not two turns. Had I played a little differently with breaking of the fellowship, it might have been two turns early. Um, or at least, uh, you know, they would have had to spend a ring to get into Mordor. All right. And then they play Mithril Coat and Sting. So. Right, I would have had a second chance to get rid of Mithril Coat and Sting with Gimli and the Fellowship using um, using Warren with Sorrow and Toil, and it would have potentially caused them to take uh, inefficient corruption damage if they had gotten a one corruption, and they took they wouldn't be able to take a random, or if they did take a random and hope to get a Hobbit, it would cause another card loss from Warren with Sorrow and Toil. So, anyway, uh, I move. Um, what do I do here? I guess I move. Right. So I got, I understand why I did it. So I, I got the dwarves to war first using my army dice without moving the witch king yet because um, I wanted to bring the mouth of Sauron in. And now um, when I use my uh, character die the hard way to move Nazgul and minions, I do get to move the mouth of Sauron. Now I would have been happy to get a whole extra hunt roll out of Nazgul Strike, as opposed to getting the Mouth of Sauron in position, but at least it's a small silver lining for my, for my mistake. Um, I come after uh, Lorien, and um, the Fellowship is in. So they're only rolling one, uh, they're only rolling four dice to my 10, which is obviously not good, but they have Gollum. The Hunt Pool is quite friendly, and they have Mithril Coat and Sting. So um, I roll three eyes and now, so they were, they were in the 12% unlucky of Gandalf. They do have the chance to get Gandalf now. They know that Day Without Dawn is gone. They can be moving four times with this. Um, and the question is, are they going to be able to hold Lorien and hold Erebor? And um, one of the things we talked about after the game was that they could have right here, Instead of hiding the Fellowship, they could have brought in Gandalf the White into Lorien. 
And um, then I have no leadership here. And a lot of my cards are less effective. I would have Devilry of Orthanc that I could play. Um, and I would have Great Host. So I probably still would have been able to do it. But it certainly would have been harder. Um, they have Brave Stand. They also have no uh, power too great. And um, if you look at this situation, I do not have any army cards. There is no way for me to attack Lorien if they play power too great. I just don't have it. So they had a couple options here. I might have been tempted to play power too great and just hope that Shadow doesn't have it. I mean, how many cards have they seen me play? I guess they have not seen me play very many army cards. It would be very reasonable to assume that I do have an army card at this point. Um, but that is an interesting situation. So we talked about it. We didn't talk about Power Too Great after the game, but we did talk about this where they could have brought in Gandalf. And then next round, they would have been rolling five dice. So... Um, they hide, and then I go ahead and take out Lori, and I'm like, whew, they didn't have power too great, because um, I would have been stuck. All right, so uh, this combat goes pretty, I mean, pretty close to what we would expect. Um, I play some combat cards, they play some combat cards, and Lorian falls. Um, I don't think that's particularly unexpected with that that scenario. Um then they move the fellowship and they get revealed here. That's obviously not great for them. They would have been um, happier to get any of the non-eye tiles, but um, okay. And now um, I move Nazgul around. There was some winning conditions where I take out the Shire, um, but I didn't have quite the Shire and Pilar gear, but I didn't have quite enough movement to make all that happen. So I decided it was better odds to go for Erebor. I am hoping they don't have Dane Ironfoot's guard, um, but I have a bunch of units that I can bring in. So I start with, with Dreadful Spells over here. I get two hits. Um, they just hide the Fellowship. I play on on they went because if they use a ring to move, I want that in the pool. There's a chance that I'm not going to take out Erebor and there's nothing particularly useful that I can use that um, Palantir for. I could have drawn a strategy card instead, uh, but my plan is to take out Pelargir so I go up to nine, reinforce fully into Erebor, and then even if they attack out with Woodland Realm, I'm still going to, I already have Pelargir. So um, that's why I decided to play this right away. And I don't know, maybe that's a minor optimization. I should have drawn a strategy card or um, should have saved it in case they use a ring. I don't know. Um, so I attack Pilar gear. Uh, obviously I win that. I use the mouth to, uh, move armies. I now have a 15 hit point army in Erebor and, um, they use a ring to move because what else can you do? They do get a zero. That's nice for them, but, um, you know, I'm going to try and win this round and, uh, the battle goes basically as, close to what you'd expect. Um, well, they, I forgot. They got three hits, round one. That's obviously good. Um, I got two, but then a uh, great host. And uh, then Relentless Assault finishes off the dwarves. So, um, you know, I was able to hold Erebor. I mean, I was able to take Erebor to get to 11 victory points. If, uh, you know, they had played power too great, that definitely would have saved the you know, at least one more round. Um, maybe I would have drawn into a strategy card. Um, we saw that, you know, the next card I drew happened to not be uh, an army card. But uh, yeah, it was a, it was a very, uh, you know, they said it wasn't close and I know that they felt bad for having not gotten Gandalf. Um, but for so long, right? It was 12, 12% odds of when they would get Gandalf. But um, if they had played Power to Great and they had put Gandalf into Lorien um, and then moved like once this round, they would have had five dice. They might have been able to hold off for two more turns. So I know they were feeling a little frustrated, 
by the luck. There were a lot of early hunts, hunt successes. But I think I think this just goes to show there are still there are still possibilities. There are, there are often ways that you can um, hold things off. Let's look at the statistics. So I was definitely uh, positive on sixes and fives. Do remember that a lot of those came in combats in Westham Net and Fold, where uh, I like completely overkilled by you know, many, many hits. So I, it didn't feel like the, um, the battles in many of the strongholds were unbalanced. In my opinion, they were pretty balanced. Obviously some of the hunts were a little in my favor, but that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it and, uh, have a good rest of the day.